I believe tongues is a spiritual gift. I think it's a spiritual gift every missionary on a field that speaks a tongue that's not their native language needs. I believe it. I do. You know, Brother Alex in our church has the gift of tongues. He does. He speaks a couple dialects of uh, uh, Filipino. He speaks Spanish. He speaks English. And he picks up languages very easily. He speaks in tongues. Brother Charlie's got the gift of tongues. He's bilingual. He speaks excellent Spanish, excellent English. And that's a spiritual gift. Do you, do you, can you see where that could be used in the church? Mm -hmm. Could that be useful? Sure could. I wish I had the gift of tongues. I need to get the gift of tongues. Do you see any one of these gifts that any of us could say, I don't need that? You see a single gift here that any person here could say, I don't need that gift? How many of you don't need the gift of wisdom? How many of you don't need the gift of knowledge? How many of you don't need the gift of faith? Friend, we all need all of them, don't we? And God's going to emphasize a gift in somebody. He's going to use them more than someone else in that area. And I'll tell you, if you want to know, Christian, if you want a barometer or a thermometer to take a reading so that you can know what your spiritual gift is, find out how you're being used. If you're not being used in an area, my friend, that is not your spiritual gift. I don't mean to be unkind, but that's just a fact. A lot of times we pick our spiritual gift. This is what I'd like to have. Friend, if you're not being used, it's not your spiritual gift. Okay, I'm going to preach an hour and 45 minutes if I don't end, so let's just finish up. But all these worketh that every one, that one in the self same spirit, dividing to every man several as he will. So everything, everything works so that there's balance. So that everything is divided the way that God wants it to be. And that it's done. Listen, we don't need a bunch of preachers in our church. We need a couple. We don't need a, a bunch of uh, a bunch of laborers and workers in our church. We need a few. We need everybody to be a soul winner. We need everybody to, to be concerned about the lost and to have the love. The Bible says, "As the body is one, in verse twelve, and hath many members, and all members, all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. We need our gifts to draw us together and to complete us as a church." So if somebody were to come in here and they had a spiritual need, there'd be somebody in this church that could help them with that. Somebody come in this church and they had a need, there'd be somebody that could help them with it. When they had a car broken down and they had a spiritual need, somebody could help them with the car. That's nice, Gary. I like that. <laughs> For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. The emphasis here, my friend, is one. The emphasis here is one. Christian, if you have one spiritual gift and that's all you can emphasize and all you can think of, you're out of balance. You know, I find that, that Christians that are out of balance usually lead to a church being out of balance. You'll come into a church and only preach about one thing. they just emphasize one thing. And that thing is the truth. It's a scriptural, doctrinal, spiritual truth. But they only want to preach about that one thing. And they're out of balance. The Bible says the body working together becomes one, and that's God's way. And let's just read, read the illustration of that, of the body. For the body is not one member, but many. Verse 14, If the foot shall say, Because I'm not the hand, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Don't be jealous of somebody who has the ability to speak, or somebody who has the ability to sing, or somebody who has the ability to do something that people see and notice. The Bible says, If the ear shall say, Because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? No, my friend, you're what God made you to be, and you need to understand that and emphasize what God made you to be and serve the Lord. If the whole body were an eye, where, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Well, you got churches that work on discernment, and they got so much discernment that they don't have any kind of practical ability <coughs> to win souls. You got churches that win souls, and they win so many souls they don't have any practical ability to discern whether there's sin in the church. My friend, God wants us to be balanced. He wants us as Christians not to emphasize one thing. That's why, why when we preach the Bible, we ought to preach all the Bible. We shouldn't just preach the things that we think we're dealing with right now or whatever. We ought to know the whole counsel of God. Let's go ahead and finish up. Now God has said in verse 18, the members, every one of them in the body, as it pleased them. Now look at verse 27. Verse 26. 
meant to say 25. So I change it again. <laughs> Verse 25, that there should be no schism in the body. You understand that? What is the emphasis of chapter 12? That there should be no schism in the body. You know what a schism is? A schism is a division. And friend, the purpose of spiritual gifts is to unite. It's to draw together. It's to bring a sweetness of spirit. It's to do the whole work that God's called a church to do. You know, there's not just one thing that a church does. A church is a unique body. And I could go on and on and on telling you about the functions of the church. You know, a lot of people have, have acrostics and things that they say, well, what's the purpose of the church? Well, evangelism and discipleship is what a lot of people will say. My friend, there's a lot more to a church than that. The church is the body of Christ. It's what every Christian is supposed to belong to. And when you belong to it, it's a whole body and it doesn't have fingers and toes missing it. And it doesn't have one great big eyeball and doesn't have one great big ear because it would be grotesque if it did those things. It would be out of balance. And verse 27 says, Now ye are the body of Christ and the members in particular. So ye, and that's a blanket statement, folks. You are the body of Christ. And you, singular, are members in particular. In other words, you belong. Christian, can I say to you, you're supposed to belong? It's be a good time to talk about church membership, wouldn't it? You're supposed to belong to the body as members in particular. It's very difficult when somebody doesn't belong to the body for them to be used. Because they don't have their place. They don't have their place in the body. The Bible says God has set some in the church. First, apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healings. Helps, governments, diversities of tongues. And here's the question that we ought to answer. Are all apostles? What's the answer? No. Everybody say to you, are all apostles? No. Everybody together. Are all apostles? No. no. Are all prophets? No. no. Are all teachers? No. no. Are all workers of miracles? No. no. Have all the gift of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? No. Do all interpret? No. no. What a mess if we all did the same thing, huh? Boring. But covet earnestly the best gifts. Christian, you know what? The word for best here is, and I'm going to point this out, and I really am finished. You know what the word for best is from, from a word, crepon. And what it really means, if you, if you do a study on the word, and I've done a study, is most useful. Most useful. And the Scripture says we're supposed to covet earnestly the most useful gifts. You and I ought to say, you know what, God? This may be a spiritual gift, but I need something I can serve you with. I need something I can use to bring people to Sunday school. I need a spiritual gift that I could use to get people into church. I need a spiritual gift that will help me have Bible answers for people with major problems. I need a useful gift. Christian, can I say to you that if you've got a gift and it does, it's not useful, it doesn't amount to a hill of beans, you might as well just forget about it. I don't mean being kind, but that's the truth. Why don't you just forget about it and look for something that's worthwhile? Pastor, this is what I'm really good at. You know what? We don't need an underwater basket weaver. We just don't. You could be good at it, but it wouldn't be helpful. And we ought to be careful to covet the most useful. And the Bible says, yet I've shown you a more excellent way. And of course, that's charity. Okay, I did in less than an hour and 45 minutes. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. And before we do that, though, let me challenge you. Don't leave this passage of Scripture alone. Go to it and search it and study it and covet earnestly the best gifts. That's the, that, is our, that is our invitation this morning. Covet earnestly the best gifts. We're going to pray and then we're going to have a time of invitation. Heavenly Father, this morning, I just ask that You would take the message of preaching of the Word of God. Lord, I know that this morning there's just no way to cover everything in this passage of Scripture. But it's so important for us to understand what the body is supposed to be like. And how you, God the Father, desire for things to be in the body. And how that God the Son has provided for things to be in the body. And how God the Holy Spirit wants to help us to be what we should be in this local body. Father, this morning, may you give us a, a desire, an earnest desire to be used. To be useful. And to covet the things that are most useful. We pray in Jesus' name.
Amen.